Thinking about going to Greece? Well, you don't want to miss this. This is my four-part travel series on the beautiful nation of Greece. How's it going, Wanderlusters? Long time no see. This is Mitchell from Mitchell Travels, and I apologize my absence, but I have been traveling, and more specifically, I was in the beautiful country of Greece, and I got plenty of tips and awesome things to share for you guys to help your next Greek vacation be that much smoother. Before I get into any specifics about Greece and what to do, where to go, and some tips, I just want to share that this nation is absolutely the most beautiful nation that I've seen to date, and if you had any hesitation whatsoever about visiting Greece, please, by all means, visit it. You will not regret it. It is an incredible experience and one that you just won't get anywhere else. That said, I'm gonna break down these videos into four different parts. It's going to be one for each section of Greece that I visited, and that happens to be Athens, the island of Zakynthos, Mykonos, and Santorini. So if you're keeping track, that means that this video is going to be about Athens, the next video is going to be about Zakynthos, and then the following week, Mykonos, and we're going to finish it off with the gorgeous island of Santorini. Before we get started, I am going to say a few things about Greece in general before you visit, just a couple of things that you can get down that are pretty generic so you can navigate through Greece no problem. That way you don't have to go scouring the internet, reading blog after blog like, you know, well, I had to do. So let's get it started. When traveling to Greece, leave the credit card at home. The reason being is because most places are actually cash only in Greece. I learned this the hard way. But hey, what's a hundred bucks in ATM and foreign transaction fees anyway, right? Most people speak English. You want a Euro, say Euro Pita. The Mediterranean, Ionian, and Aegean seas are a lot colder than you think. Freddo cappuccinos are a godsend, especially in a hundred degree heat. With that said, we're ready to move to Athens. Now, Athens is commonly known as that part of Greece that most travelers really don't like. The reason for that is because Athens, like any big major metropolis, is, you know, more polluted, it has more traffic, more congestion, so people are generally turned off by Athens as a whole. Add to the fact that some parts of Athens you really can't quite tell if you're in Istanbul or Beirut, and it doesn't exactly help its appeal. Nothing personal against Istanbul or Beirut, by the way. That said, Athens has its charms, and it's my job to tell you how to navigate, where to go, and what to see. So, odds are you're going to land in Athens International Airport, that's ATH in airport code, and from there, one of the big mistakes that you can make is actually taking a taxi into the city of Athens, because it's going to run you roughly about 35 euros flat fee to any part of the city. Odds are, if you're going to Athens, you're going to go to the Acropolis area because that's where most people go. So I suggest that you take the M3 line. It is basically the subway that takes you from Athens International Airport all the way to Syntagma Square, which is right by the Plaka District, right by the Acropolis. And it takes about 45 minutes and trains apart about every 11 minutes or so. Oh, and the train is only about 10 euros, so you're definitely going to be saving money by taking the train. All right, so you get to Syntagma Square. Where do you want to go? You want to go to the Acropolis. Now, that's by the Plaka District, and that, my friends, is just about the best, nicest-looking, most historic district in Athens. That's where you want to be. Now, where did I stay? Well, I stayed in the Nikki Athens Hotel. The reason that I actually booked this hotel is because of the price and because I knew I wasn't going to be in Athens long and there was only a few things that I wanted to check out. Centrally located about a block from Syntagma Square and about a five minute walk from the Monastiraki, which is basically Athens Grand Central Station, the Nikki Athens Hotel provided a great place to sleep, very centrally located and for only $87 a night. Remember, I booked in advance. So you're exploring Plaka and you're hungry, I suggest two places. Cave of Acropolis Restaurant, it's on a nice quiet road on the top of a hill at the base of the Acropolis. Very nice views, more of a sit down place. Or you can go to Bairaktadis in the Monastiraki, again it's about a five minute walk from the Nikki Athens Hotel. They're really famous for their euros, they're excellent, they're cheap, especially if you're looking for just a quick bite. Something really neat to see in Athens, of course you're probably going to check out the Parthenon and the Acropolis, so while you're there, make sure that you catch a sunset. It's a panoramic sunset right there in the National Historic Monument area, sort of like a rocky hilltop. It is absolutely stunning. Just like everything else in Greece, I just couldn't help but watch and watch and just 
take it all in. Now, Athens is pretty simple to navigate around. You can take a taxi to some places, albeit it's more expensive, but you know, they do have a very good subway system and bus system, so odds are you could avoid taxis just to save a little bit on the budget. Now, if you're taking a ferry to or from Athens, remember Athens has three different ports. You can either go to the main port of Piraeus, you could also go to Rafina and Lavrion. They're all really good. Of course, one's bigger than the other one. If you happen to find yourself in the port of Rafina, it is actually a nice little marina with tons of really nice, very authentic Greek restaurants that I highly suggest you get yourself into. That's, of course, if you're actually in the port of Rafina, because otherwise you don't want to be there. Yeah, Piraeus ain't that pretty either. You don't want to be there. That's it's kind of one of those places you want to leave immediately after you arrive. Yeah, Plaka. Stay in Plaka. That's, that's where you want to be. All jokes aside, Athens is actually a great city. You know, it usually is the beginning point and the finishing point of every Greek vacation when you visit this beautiful nation. But that said, it has a lot of nice little hidden treasures. And like any big city, it's gonna have its parts that aren't so great, but it's gonna have something really, really unique about it. So it is definitely worth trying out, at least for a night or two. All right, guys, well, there you have it. That's a brief overview of the city of Athens. I will be back next week with a full video on the beautiful, beautiful Ionian island of Zakynthos. In the meantime, to catch more of my awesome adventures, please check me out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Four-part travel series continues next week. Until then, thank you so much, Wanderlusters, and happy travels. For more travel tips and some travel porn, don't forget to subscribe below.